Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is while you're watching this. You know sometimes you give somebody a job to do and they sort of foul it up a little bit. Let's face it, you can still use the switch. But if you give a design and engineering group a brief to build a new range of bikes, one of which is going to be a 500cc naked, which has got to keep your reputation up as the best bike manufacturer in the world, and certainly the biggest, wouldn't you like something that's going to actually do the job? You wouldn't expect twin shocks, a rear drum brake, non-adjustable forks and a single disc up front. However, this bike isn't a CG125, but lots of people have trained on it. It's not a CX500, but it's been used for dispatch riding. And it's not a Fireblade, but it's been raced a lot. Did Honda deliberately or accidentally design one of if not the best bikes in the world. So grab your helmet, hop on the back and we'll have a look at today's review. The Honda CB500, an absolutely legendary bike. This one that I'm looking at is a 2003, the last year they were produced and it's, a, as you can see, bright red. Although I said there's a single disc up front, it's got a Brembo brake on it. The original ones were Nissins, they were later replaced by Brembo's front and as you can see rear. I did hold off buying a CB500 until there was a rear disc brake on it. The engine is an absolute corker. Look at this, you get a dipstick. A dipstick on a modern bike, not a sight glass. It's so much easier to check the oil level with a dipstick. You can see the clutch cable routing is easy to get at if you ever need to change it. It's a 499cc parallel twin, 8 valve head, 4 valves per cylinder and 57 horsepower at the crank. You can also see here the carbs, the back of the filter housing. You've also got the header for the coolant. Everything's nice and easy to get at. There's even covers for the swing arm pivot. Looking at the other side of the engine, you can see the air filter, again the carbs, and uh, it's, it's lovely. It's a beautiful looking bike, and because it doesn't have fuel injection, it's carbed, it's got a tap. You've got a reserve on this one. The clocks are lovely. They're analogue, they're simple. You get a, an auto, a trip meter, and only four lights. Five if you count the side stand idiot light, which hopefully you will never need to use. The turn signal, there's only one. It doesn't have hazard lights, so left and right, whichever way you're going, you get one bit flashing. And that's all you need to, to tell you you've got the indicators on. If you look at the red line, it's 10,500 RPM, which isn't bad for a twin cylinder bike that's fairly low tuned. And as you can see, this one's barely got 12,000 miles on it. I bought it in 2017, just before my slight dink. I had a black one of these as well at the time, which had actually gone round the clock, which we'll cover in a bit. And uh, it's beautiful. It looks like it's just come off the production line. The switch gear is great. You get a pull trigger on the front for the uh, flash of the old lights, high and low beam, a choke lever, handlebar mounted. Obviously this is a carved bike, turn signal and a horn button. Moving over to the other side, I'll put a clock on this one because you don't get one on the instruments and you can actually turn the lights on and off on these and I did used to use the fact that I could put it onto side lights for when I was teaching advanced riding. Kill switch, start button. What more do you really need on a bike to have fun? The seat is 20 hours riding comfortable, I've done that. I didn't quite do a thousand miles in a day on my black one of these but I did do nearly 900 in 20 hours. I was on the bike all day and still comfortable. Opening the seat, you get a lot of storage. Here at the front, you can see the lock. There's also a first aid kit, an emergency cable repair kit. Uh, God knows what else I've got stuffed down here. Cable ties, which are always good to carry. And under here, if you empty the, I think it's 1.8 litres storage capacity you've got, you get to the battery. Pretty simple to get to. The one on my 900 Hornet is a nightmare to get at the battery. You even get storage under the tailpiece. And if you look here, you can see there's some luggage hooks no longer available, unfortunately. They came with my original one when I bought all the luggage for it. And 
it might look like you have to undo these bolts to take the seat off, but you don't, because a good hard thump on the rear of the seat when it's raised will actually push it off the little bar it's got, so the whole thing comes off as a unit. Lovely little design concept, dead easy to get the seat on and off if you're ever working on the bike. Well that's pretty much covered all the design side of it, what's it like to ride? It's a hoot. You don't have 150 miles an hour coming out of this, but you don't need it. Get these bikes on a nice little twisty back road and you can have a whale of a time. You can quite easily get the foot pegs down, which is uh, slightly worrying, but the BT45 tyres, which are the OE equipment, are brilliant. They are really, really well suited to this bike. I've actually toured on this. Um, I did have the Honda luggage, which you won't get anymore. The bike's over 20 years old now, and uh, they ceased production 20 years ago. So unfortunately, things like that aren't available. You'll notice though that in some of the shots that this one does have a back rack and it's got a small top box on it. There are a few things that can go slightly wrong. If you're going to look at buying one of these, take this bottom bolt out or see if you can because they are prone to seizing up. The air filter lives behind this. If it does seize up, the solution is grind the head off the bolt. The other two should still be perfectly okay. If you can't get any of them out, unless you're really desperate for one of these and fancy buying a second housing or are happy to run an air filter forever and ever, then uh, walk away because you won't be able to change the air filter. Another thing to be wary of and have a good look at if you're getting one of these is the underside of the swing arm. This is from the one that I was knocked off of and you can see there's a lot of corrosion on this. Yeah, the bike had done over 100,000 miles and was 18 and a half years old when I was knocked off. But this is actually an MOT failure. Um, one of my mates had worse corrosion than this and his bike failed. It's a gusset plate so it can be chopped out and replaced. But the thing is, get on top of the rust before it gets on top of you. Smooth right with 10% thinness to dilute it and make it easier to apply is a perfect match for the black Honda frame paint. The down tubes on the front of the frame will get a few stone chips on, that's the first time that I used it, but to be honest I didn't know this was going. So you might need to be looking at popping the swing arm out and giving it a dose of paint. That's fine, it's got a centre stand, it's easy to do. It's a doddle, it's got twin shocks. It's, it's so easy to work on to do jobs like this. Yes, you've got to take the back wheel out, you've got to get the brakes sorted out, you've got to get the chain on and off, but it's easier with a centre stand. Another thing that may go wrong, and under this cover on the left-hand side of the bike, is the regulator. My one packed up, I thought it was the battery going flat because you so rarely hear of regulator rectifier units going these days. Um, I was riding the bike, it would ride for a bit and then slow down and uh, not seem to rev, the battery would go flat regularly. It was in winter so I wasn't actually riding it that much but I did fully charge the battery, ride 12 miles to the dentist, luckily with the lights off. Riding back it was getting a bit darker, lights on and I noticed the bike wasn't revving properly. It gradually slowed down, 100 yards from my house it cut out and I free wheeled it back to my house. Even though the regulator went, the bike didn't let me down and leave me stranded. Replacement units, pattern parts, about 70 quid, probably 80 now, because it was some time ago that I replaced this, and it's two bolts to secure it and one clip. Jobs are good and Other things that will go, obviously you've got to replace brakes and tyres and chains and sprockets. Easy enough jobs to do, to be honest on this. Clutch cable's a doddle. A speedo cable, yes, it still runs on a cable from the front wheel. Again, it's a doddle, it's quite easy to sort out. Throttle cables are a bit more involved. You'll need a lolly stick or two, a couple of cable ties and a screwdriver. Ignore the Haynes manual. It will tell you to take off the carbs. Trying to get the carbs on and off the rubbers is an absolute pig of a job. I gave up, reseated everything, had a look at it, got my engineering head on, tank came off obviously and with, and with a bit of uh, thinking you should be able to easily replace the throttle cables. You'll need to lock the carbs in the open and close position while you change them at the throttle end but it is easily doable, it takes about an hour including figuring out what on earth you're doing time. There is one thing these bikes will not put up with and that's a pillock in a Peugeot 3008 turning across in front of you. 
Although, to be honest, I did manage to write the car off as well. It doesn't look too bad. The bike's laying on its side. You can see some, there's some obvious damage. Uh, the headstock got about a 15 degree offset on it, so the bike was written off. I did buy it back. Um, why would I buy back a wrecked bike? Well, first of all, I'd got a perfectly good one sat in the garage in red that I'd bought a month before my accident, and I could always use this one for spares. The other thing, I stripped and completely rebuilt the bike with as little as possible on it, so it still looked like a motorbike. Um, everything was stripped out and a really really good bunch of friends and colleagues helped me do a 24-hour motorbike push to raise money for the air ambulance raising just over £2,700. As I mentioned earlier this bike was discontinued in 2003 due to tightening emissions legislations and Honda brought out something else the CBF500. I don't like admitting that the CB500 isn't the best bike in the world but the CBF with its wider rear wheel and monoshock does handle a little bit better. It doesn't come with a centre standard standard. You can't buy them anymore. If you're lucky and you've got a CBF with a centre stand, yeah, keep hold of it. It's great. Um, the only thing is the engine, it's had fuel injection slapped on it and it's mechanical fuel injection, so there's no fuel pump. And it doesn't run as smoothly as a CB500 engine. Nowhere near. I think... Uh, carbed CB500 engine in a CBF500 frame would be an absolute world beater. Not that they weren't anyway, I mean the CB500 I rate as possibly the most complete bike for doing everything. It may be second best at everything it does, but you've got to think that this thing will go for miles and miles service intervals for the oil are 8,000 miles although I change mine every four it's a doddle to work on it'll go distance it won't do two up autobahn touring type work but everything else it's great I can't recommend these highly enough if you do find a good one or you've got a good one keep it you'll regret selling it if you ever do I would buy another one of these tomorrow if they were still available when you're looking at how long they'll go for, apparently Honda designed the engine to last for 300,000 miles. The black one I was knocked off of didn't quite go that far, although it did do 104,000 miles. And I took it out in the rain and took it back where I bought it from with a friend of mine, Gavin. And uh, you can see the three of us here with Charlie Lee in the middle, who was about four when I bought the bike. Um, from John Lee, which is now John Lee and Sons Motorcycles in Heim Feathers. I can't rate this bike highly enough. It's so flexible, so useful, so much fun, and that's the big thing. If you're riding a bike, you are doing it for fun. These things are brilliant. Lots of storage under the seat, really high build quality, and they just seem to run forever. You might get the occasional hiccup like a regulator unit going down, but, but I never even had a shim in the engine. After 18 and a half years and 100,000 miles, you'd think it would need at least one, but no, it's absolutely fantastic. If you can get your hands on one, I thoroughly recommend it. And if I did have access to Doctor Who's TARDIS, I'd pop back to 1999 when I got my black one. I'd probably get about another three or four, some of which I'd sell, to be honest. If I could sell in zero miles one of these, I'd be a millionaire. Anyway, that's enough of me blathering on about the CB500. I'm sure there'll be comments down below and uh, hopefully you'll all agree with me that this is an absolutely cracking bike. So, until I put the next video out, happy riding. It's getting towards the spring in the UK, so uh, I'll be out more and more in the daylight and hopefully spending less and less time washing all the muck off the bike. Take care.